this is a wonderful discovery. Look at this. Scientists pinpoint the oldest recorded solar eclipse and it's mentioned in Joshua's biblical battle. We know that Joshua, the son of Nun, took the leadership of the tribes of Israel from Moses after Moses' death, and he was the leader of the tribes as they entered the Promised Land. Stoyan Zaimov, Christian Post reports, researchers from Cambridge University have reportedly pinpointed the oldest solar eclipse ever recorded. It's dating back to over 3,000 years. 30th of October, 1207 BC, which is also mentioned in the Bible in the book of Joshua. Using a combination of the biblical text and an ancient Egyptian text, the researchers were able to refine the dates of the Egyptian pharaohs, in particular the dates of the reign of Ramesses the Great. This is what the University of Cambridge said, adding that the results have been published in the Royal Astronomical Society journal Astronomy and Geophysics. Professor Sir Colin Humphreys from the University of Cambridge's Department of Materials, Science and Metallurgy said that the Bible refers strong, offers strong clues relating to the astronomical event in question. The book of Joshua chronicles the Israeli leader taking the people of Israel into Canaan, a region of the ancient Near East in which he prayed and saw the sun stand still in the midst of the battle. Joshua 10.13 reads, And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the nation had avenged themselves of their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jeshar? And the sun stayed in the midst of heaven, and hastened not to go down about a whole day. Humphreys, who is also a fellow of Selwyn College, pointed out that the King James Bible translation of 1611 interprets the text to mean that the sun and moon stopped moving. Quote, but going back to the original Hebrew text, we determined that an alternative meaning could be that the sun and moon just stopped doing what they normally do. They stopped shining, he explained. In this context, the Hebrew words could be referred to a solar eclipse when the moon passes between the earth and the sun, and the sun appears to stop shining. This interpretation is supported by the fact that the Hebrew word translated stand still has the same root as a Babylonian word used in ancient astronomical texts to describe eclipses. The Cambridge article points out that earlier historians have used the biblical text alongside Egyptian text dating from the reign of Pharaoh Mer Nefta, which presents evidence that the Israelis were in Canaan between 1500 and 1050 BC to try and date the possible eclipse. The historians were unsuccessful, however, as they had been looking only for total eclipses. Quote, what is earlier historian, what the earlier historians failed to consider was that it was instead an annular eclipse in which the moon passes directly in front of the sun but is too far away to cover the disk completely, leading to the characteristic ring of fire appearance. In the ancient world, the same word was used for both total and annular eclipses, it explains. Humphrey said that researchers have since developed a new eclipse code, which takes into account variations in the Earth's rotation over time. Quote, from their calculations, they determined that the only annular eclipse visible from Canaan between 1500 and 1050 BC was on October 30th, 1207 BC in the afternoon. That's what the article continued to explain. Quote, if their arguments are accepted, it would not only be the oldest solar eclipse yet recorded, it would also enable researchers to date the reigns of Ramesses the Great and his son Merneptha to within a year. End quote. Besides the date of the oldest eclipse recorded, the new calculations could also lead researchers to date the reigns of pharaohs more precisely. An Israeli research team suggested back in January the scientific explanation for the biblical episode in 1207 BC involving Joshua and the sun still standing. 
Yetz Hetzi Yitzhak, Daniel Weistab, and Uzi Avnir of Ben Gurion University in Israel's Negev addressed previous challenges when it comes to aligning the solar eclipse and the biblical account, given the fact that during an eclipse the sun disappears rather than visibly lingering in the sky. The researchers turned to Hebrew etymology to resolve the contradiction, however, and pointed out the word dom, translated as stand still in the passage, actually means to become dark, which would fit right into the characteristics of an eclipse. Others, such as Stephen Bridge, director of the Garden Tomb in Jerusalem, and a retired minister from England, have suggested that descriptions of daytime darkness in the Bible, such as during Joshua's battle and the three hours of darkness that fell at Jesus' crucifixion, may not actually have been eclipses. Quote, whatever the darkness was, it was not an eclipse, and we have no explanation of what it was or even what it meant but it certainly would have invoked the people who were there a, a, to a, a profound sense of something monumental happening, which indeed it was, Bridge said in a CBN News article from August. Okay, well, I have read what happened at the time of the three hours of darkness during Jesus Christ's crucifixion. We all know that it was a full moon. Passover in the Hebrew calendar is only on a full moon. And uh, that's the only Hebrew feast that is on a full moon. And it was designed to be so from the beginning when God gave Moses the instructions of the calendar and the feasts for the Hebrews. That Passover was to be on a full moon, just as it was in the original Passover when they left Egypt. Now, it's because they knew that the three hours of darkness of the Son of God being crucified, killed on the cross, wasn't a full moon, but as Saint Dionysius the Aropayit, the first bishop of Athens, Greece, the, uh, who was the disciple of Saint Paul the Apostle, claims, because uh, Dionysius was 24 years old when this three hours of darkness happened during Christ's crucifixion, he was in Egypt at that time, and he was also an astronomer. And uh, he was bewildered by the fact that the sun was blackened during a full moon. Because what they saw was that the moon moved uh, against its path backwards and stood for three hours in front of the sun. And there is no such thing as such a long eclipse of the sun. It doesn't last for three hours. It doesn't even last for half an hour. So, yes, the moon traveled backwards, stood in front of the sun for three hours, and then went back into the position of being a full moon. That's what happened during the time of Jesus Christ's crucifixion. It was a solar eclipse, which was not supposed to take place, but it did. That's why Dionysius, the disciple of St. Paul, said, Either the world is coming to an end, or something has happened to God. The world did not come to an end, but something did happen to God. He was crucified. Of course, he died, and but he was also resurrected. So this is on Christian Post, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. Thank you.